Hello, hello, everyone. This is The Duke, host of the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast, with a very special message for my friends over there at Wrestler Weekly. Happy anniversary. Oh, my goodness. Over six years of terrific pro wrestling memories. It has just been such a wonderful journey. I am so proud of Wrestler Weekly. You know, Scotty is just doing such a great job over there. And, you know, to my brother, who we all miss, Coach, Coach Richardson. Oh, my goodness. What an inspiration. What a, what a fantastic human being you were. I know that you're still here in spirit watching over all of us. And that's the reason why Wrestler Weekly continues to be a one-stop shop. You know, a place that folks love to check out on social media, go down memory lane, relive some fantastic wrestling moments historically. And let me tell you something. You know, when you look at a magazine like Pro Wrestling Illustrated, part of the reason why they've had such a major resurgence is because of Wrestler Weekly, keeping them out there, keeping their, their name current, allowing folks like myself to continue to be like, you know what? Man, I remember those days. Wow, Pro Wrestling Illustrated really had some great photos and, and stories and what have you. I'm going to pick up a, a newer copy of, of PWI. So I can't stress enough, Wrestler Weekly is so important to the culture of pro wrestling fandom. And it's just so incredible to be affiliated with you folks, you know, to, to be friends with you folks. And again, I just wish you the best. Really appreciate you, Scotty. I love you, my brother. Like I said, I know Coach is watching over all of us here. Uh, this is for him. You know what I mean? Because he was able to foster a relationship with pro wrestling for you and the family over there. And you continue that legacy. And you continue to make pro wrestling cool. To be a fan of wrestling, especially the historic stuff, the classic stuff. It's just so awesome, man. Really appreciate you. Wrestler Weekly, happy anniversary once again. This is the Duke signing off. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. That's right. Wrestling fans and welcome to Wrestler Weekly Presents. I'm your host, Scotty Richardson, and my co-host, Mike Leotis. We are back, and it's been a great season, Mike. I mean, last week, Carrie Von Eric, uh, what a what an awesome I mean, everybody loves Carrie Von Eric. Carrie is, is still thought of the I mean the entire Von Eric family, but Carrie was uh we said you know, Carrie was the golden goose, you yes. know. He uh just remembered so fondly by so many. Well, and uh, one of the, the ladies that I know interacts with me is Ellen. Yes. You know, Ellen Landry. Yes. Right? Uh, so shout out to Ellen, but a uh, big Von Eric fan. And so we have come to the season finale. Season six. It's Christmas season's holiday season. And we're actually going to give you a, a little bit of a, a teaser here, but... Uh, it is the season finale, and we're going to wrap season six tonight. Uh, but stay tuned because we're going to bring back the old Wrestler Weekly Presents Christmas special yes. this year and the Wrestler Weekly Presents New Year's special. Uh, so it's been a couple years since we did those types of shows, yeah. and so we're excited about that. And I will tell you that. The Christmas special will be Greg Valentine. Yes. We're going to be spotlighting Greg. And then the New Year's special, we're going to be celebrating the three champs. Yeah. And the three champs were, you know, back when, when we were coming up, 
You know, it was NWA, AWA, and WWWF or WWF, depending on that time frame. But there was always the three champs in the mags. And so we're going to celebrate that coming on the holiday New Year special. But for tonight, our season six, episode eight, season finale, we are going to celebrate the newest items yes. in our collection. And we thought that would be great. We always get uh, DMs and messages and comments about, well, what have you gotten lately? What, mm -hmm. what is in lately? And so we're going to go through that. But remember, if you are new to Wrestler Weekly and this is your first time coming into our living room yeah. and uh, to our man cave and <laughs> vault uh, in Wrestler Weekly headquarters, then uh, we thank you for coming. We thank you for being here. And you can follow us on all social media outlets, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a, a like on Facebook and share it. You know, share it with others uh, so they can be involved in our network and our world as well. But also, uh, if you're interested in our articles, you can go to Medium, the app, as well as ProWrestlingTees.com and get your T-shirts. Family Bacon Wrestling, Amazon is the place to be for that. And we thank you for your support. We're going to jump right in with Fred Ward. <laughs> uh, Austin Idol, Fred Ward. We know we all know about the, the infamous check, right? Yeah. The, the Battle Royal. And, uh, but I was able to obtain something uh, that was sold. Anytime you find items that were sold on merch tables back in the day. It, those That's a really special memorabilia item. And so this one in particular comes from Georgia Championship Wrestling. Fred Ward, Mr. President and Mr. Wrestling 2, America's number one wrestling fan, courtesy of Fred Ward, Columbus, Georgia. Check this thing out. The original photo, the glossy paper, and I don't know if it'll stay, but I'll hold it. Mike, what do you think about this? Well, it was uh, it was well known that Jimmy Carter and his mom yes. were big wrestling fans, and their favorite wrestler was Mr. Wrestling 2, Johnny Walker, who uh, passed away just about a year ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, a, a great aside, I mean, this photo op uh, is very famous and has been seen in the magazines over time. Yeah. But there was, uh, Johnny Walker was uh, invited to the White House and uh, was denied entry because he refused to take <laughs> off his mask. <laughs> and so uh, they would not let him in. Yeah. Um, but that was kayfabe. Yeah, And, uh, you know, he was, he had to protect the identity of yeah. Mr. Wrestling number two. But this photo op uh, is a classic for a lot of reasons. So uh, lots of fun. Absolutely. And uh, I will tell you while we're talking about this, because I'm going to tie it in as we segue, but uh, join Wrestler Weekly, our YouTube channel, because in January, uh, next month, Mike, uh, Wrestler Weekly Conversations. Coming returns. back. Yep, coming and, back. Uh, so looking forward to a new season for mm -hmm. you and Wrestler Weekly Conversations. A great season last time. If you missed anything from last season of Wrestler Weekly Conversations, I mean, Mike had uh, Kerry Silken. Yeah. Uh, Will. Yeah, Mahoney. Mahoney. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Bob Smith, Bob for Wrestling Smith. Illustrated, and I love Bob. Bob's Bob, great. I mean, he and he he loves us. Yeah, which is great. Bob, uh, when we were finished, said, "Oh man, we're done. Like we can't keep going." <laughs> I said, "Well, it'll be another season, Bob. You know, yeah, so uh, be on the lookout because." Yeah. Uh, uh, but we got some surprise guests for you. Yeah. Some uh, some good folks lined up um, that we think you'll enjoy. Yeah. And then Mike and I are happy to announce that after his. Uh, winter season uh, as we move into the spring summer uh, Mike and I are going to be debuting a brand new show called Make the Case and this is going to take certain topics from wrestling um, some potential matchups uh, potential is this wrestler a legend um, so many different situations and again respectful banter we're making the case <laughs> not an argument um but we want to hear from folks and hear what you think um about some of these topics yeah absolutely and i think that we 
we kind of started this, and we'll probably throw out that episode. Uh, did did professional wrestling end as we know it in 1996 <laughs> at, at the Iron Man match? So we we have had some of these discussions in the past, but it'll be it'll be great to just say, okay, this is what I think, and Mike make the case, yeah, or vice versa, or I will make the case. Yes, so, but we're looking forward to that. And one of the things, and I will tell you, well, this is where this ties in. I'm making the case already when we talk about this in the summer of 2022. Yes. Uh, I'm making the case that Mr. Wrestling 2 should have been the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion oh. uh, because you've got the President of the United States, very popular uh -huh. president, not really, but, <laughs> I mean, but he was a, a president yeah. nonetheless, and this was a very popular situation. This, this photo has been in most mags programs. We've seen this everywhere, but stay tuned for that summer of 22. I'm going to make the case. Mike. <laughs> I'm going to make the case. There you go. So moving on to our next item, we are going to the great white North. We are going North of the border. Um, as some of you guys may know, I'm a big Maple Leafs fan. Yeah. Um, and here you have Angelo Mosca with the Canadian Heavyweight Championship belt. Uh, another uh, book that was recently yes. released on that yeah. one. Um, yeah, absolutely. And so uh, we, we've had some fans ask about this. And, uh, and again, this is signed, too, by uh, King Kong Mosca, King who Kong. is a star in the Canadian Football League as yeah, well. Absolutely. Um, not just, uh, oh, he played. I mean, this, is, this was a star football player in Canada. Right. Um, this would have been like in the States, you know, uh, like Lawrence Taylor becoming a right. full-time wrestler. Right. Um, this was, this was like that. Yeah. So this is June 8th of 1981. We are in Madison Square Garden and the Canadian champion, Angelo Mosca, is going to wrestle. And by the way, at this time, June 8th of 81, he was the Canadian champion. Yes. And so here you've got a Canadian champion uh, wrestling Bob Backlund. For the World Heavyweight Championship of the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship, Madison Square Garden, 1981. And this is a game-used program, as you can see the writing. And I, I just am fascinated when it's belt versus belt. Absolutely. And obviously, Canadian title, not on the line. But he was the champion at the time, and it's all, I'm always fascinated by that. Well, and, and again, you know, this Canadian championship meant that you were the top star in Maple Leaf Wrestling. It meant that you were the guy. And an interesting dynamic here, and this happened a lot in the territory days, and you saw this a little bit uh, in the 90s with Bret Hart and Steve Austin when they yeah. had the Canadian versus the U.S. Yeah. Angelo Mosca was a hero in Canada. Oh, yeah. Um, cheered, um, had actually a great feud with, uh, he was known as the great Hussein yeah. at that time, but the Iron Sheik, right. uh, classic right. cage match, Maple Leaf Gardens. Um, but in, uh, in the World Wrestling Federation, uh, Moscow was a heel. Yeah. And, uh, and so he came in, um, and, and wrestled Backlund. Backlund got the Duke that night. Um, but yeah, uh, this was a great card. I mean, that Bob Backlund, uh, King Kong Moscow match was special refereed by Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson. There you go. Uh, also on this card is you had the, the IC title, Pedro Morales, the champion, who uh, wrestled Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Don Morocco against Rick Martell. How about that? And, and this next one, this is a big one. Killer Khan, Dusty Rhodes. In the garden. In the garden. Uh, but I like the fact that you got Anoki in a tag match. Yeah, for the tag team titles, yeah, right? Uh, absolutely. The Moon so Dogs. The Moon Dogs against, uh, against Yoshiaki Yatsu, uh, who you might remember from 82-83 uh, got a... Uh, significant push in world class. Uh, he didn't stay long, um, but he was the undefeated Toriyatsu, and he even beat Kabuki. Yeah. How about Johnny Rods against Kurt Henning? There you go, a young Kurt Henning. Um, uh, in his early days, a young... Uh, we'll have to do some research here, Mike. Curly-haired. Was this Kurt Henning's first appearance in the Garden? It's quite possible. Because Johnny Rods did, the, did, did, the, did, did the, it with Gino. Yeah. And Kurt Henning um, had a short run there uh, in the World Wrestling Federation, kind of like a jobber to the stars. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was very young, um, but you could see then how, uh, how good he, he was going to be. Yeah, and unfortunately, the champion of the junior heavyweight uh, division there, Fujinami, was uh, 
not he was scheduled, but not did not show. We had Larry Sharp. In his Larry place. Sharp from my home state of New Jersey. <laughs> You've ever heard of the Monster Factory, which is still up and running. Danny Cage does a great job uh, with the Monster Factory, but that was Larry Sharp and uh, Buddy Rogers. Yeah, who started yeah. that? How about Man Mountain Cannon? Was that uh <laughs> from Sea Island, Georgia? I don't not familiar with that dude, but hey, you how can't about, you can't win them all. How about Frank Savage? I know Randy Savage. You want to make the Dutch case? Savage. You want to make the case of a match between Man Mountain Cannon and Frank Savage? I would not actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that one. But uh, I'll take that, Man Mountain. I'm I'm gonna say probably. Yeah, I'm gonna take Man Mountain on that one. But in the opening card, there's uh, somebody who's near and dear to my heart. One of the first wrestlers I ever met, and he was so cool. SD yeah, Special yeah. Delivery Jones, uh, a favorite uh, in uh, in my area growing up. Yeah, and I like that the bottom, it says the first bout starts at 8.30, and there's, uh, let's see, three, six, there's nine matches. Yeah, there this you go. This one went late. Yeah. This one probably went late. Yeah. Uh, but this one, again, game used. You can see uh, the writing there, and I love it because uh, we see here, I mean, talk about precise. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, look how precise this Bob Backlund wins at the 10-minute, 31-second mark. Yeah. I mean, very precise. Mm -hmm. Uh, Morocco it counted out 1027. I mean, 1145, two out of three falls. You can see I was all the way down the card here. Well, the game used program. And you notice too, there's a circular, a circle with a number and that's the match order. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, usually the title match did not go on last. Right. Um, there was a couple of matches after the title match. Yeah. Um, but the world title match was generally three quarters of the way yeah. through the card. Yeah. Just, uh, just a great program. And again, the fact that here's Killer Khan on the back, just the fact that and that's uh, uh, Yatsu on the yeah, front Yatsu there. Yatsu on the front. Um, but I, I just like the fact that that knowing that these two were champions yeah. and they had this this great match. Uh, now this one came uh, a couple months ago. Um, I got a, I saw a post by Ricky Morton. And he has a family member that's that's battling some issues and medically and um, and, and, you know, for support and was going to sell some things and sell some items. And I picked this one up, um, and donated to the calls. Uh, this is a, uh, some type of program. We're really not sure where it is or what it is. We don't know if it's a piece of a program, but regardless, I uh, did not know that Ricky was going to sign it. And, and Ricky and I became friends back when I was working uh, with Tommy Wildfire Rich back in 2017. We had the Halloween show. Yeah. We brought Ricky Morton in and Austin Idol. Um, Manny Fernandez was on that card, but, uh, uh, this is Ricky Morton and it's a, a pretty, pretty neat program. Well, and the cool thing the about this is, yeah. uh, yeah, there's some, there's some different shots and these, these things were really popular back in the eighties. You saw a lot of tag teams, uh, do these photo shoots. Uh, you know, we tease a lot. There's the one of the, uh, you know, the fabulous ones with the speedos and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and with the jet skis and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, here's some, some different photos, um, you know, the rock and roll express that are supposed to be candid. And then these are headshots, different headshots. There's Ricky on the front and Robert on the back. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, these were, were very, very popular, but especially amongst the tag teams I right. found, right. uh, Fantastics had photos like this, yeah. um, you know, and, and so many, so many teams. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I missed to show you is, uh, some, some, Maple Leaf ticket stubs. Maple Leaf ticket stubs. These are hard to come by. Yeah. Um, uh, Maple Leaf Gardens is still standing. It is no longer a full size arena. It's been it's been renovated. Uh, Ryerson University Hockey uses that, but you can tour it. You could actually go in and tour the building. And uh, uh, but a, a classic venue and uh, nice to have those stubs. Absolutely. This is uh, Miles and I went to the Fan Fest that was put on. Uh, uh, classic wrestling fan fest by our good friends at T Mark Productions, and uh, Marty and those guys do a great job. But uh, uh, in Charlotte, back in July, and Miles and I went. It was Miles's first fan fest, and he got to meet Missy Hyatt. There you go. Uh, and uh, Missy signed this for him. And uh, it's a funny story that, uh, and it, Miles has it in his three ring binder collection, but. Uh, Missy uh, really took to Miles and did did a great job and was you know really encouraging of of him and his collection and different things and getting into being a fan and 
And so uh, she said, you know what, any any eight by 10 on the table, you know, you, nah. you can have and I'll sign it for you for free. And so Miles looked around and finally he, he took one and um, we, we, he, she signed it, it was great. And we went and we were walking away and in the hallway and Miles said, do you know why I chose this one? And I'm like, no. And he said, well, this is, she, this was the only one she had clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. And she, and he said, well, I, you know, I, she said, I, I thought mom would get mad. Yeah. I, I <laughs> um, but you know, we, we see Missy on Twitter. She's a tremendous wrestling fan, yeah. um, being in wrestling, but an actual fan. Yeah. I mean, she she'll comment on things she's watching, um, you know, from all over the world, and it's it's real. It's a, she's a fun follow, right? On uh, on on social media, absolutely. And uh, so we we thank Missy uh, a ton, and uh, she gave me a pretty good shout out uh, for being a good father. Yes, and bringing yes, my did. son to her table, and so uh, we love Missy, and we thank you for uh, those items. And so uh, this next one is someone that Miles and I met at the fan fest. And when I showed this to this person, uh, he was so excited, and that's Ted DiBiase, and he just could not get over uh, his youth. <laughs> uh, but uh, with the belt, and this is a great, uh, I'll, I'll take it out of the package for you here, but it's, a, it's an N NWA program and, and rarely seen. It's a, a bit of a rare item. It's Championship Wrestling Presents Professional Wrestling NWA. Um, Bobby Norton and I have believed that this came from the same type of family of the grapevines yes. uh, down in Florida. And so this is a great shot with Black Jack Mulligan with the U.S. title that I love, uh, the red leather. Uh, Dick Murdoch, a nice shot. Is that the... That's, uh, uh... I'm not sure what belt that is, but if you want to comment, you certainly can. But Ted DiBiase, he loved this one, and he was he got such a kick out of of this. And uh, is that the that's the, the international, international heavyweight champ? Not yeah. sure uh, what uh, what that belt was for, but again, it's one of those style belts. We had mentioned this in yeah. uh, another episode with Valentine. Um, with the, the smaller belts right. and, uh, I had a conversation with Dave Milliken. Uh, these belts I think are really cool. They're really nice design. They generally have the three plates on each right. side and, and, uh, the bigger plate and somebody said, Oh, that belt's too small. And, uh, in yeah. Memphis, they had, uh, a similar belt, their right. Southern Heavyweight Championship. And right. Dave Milliken replied, well, if it's good enough for Jerry Lawler, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And those are the Levy style. Belts, yes. The, that, the, the uh, Levy or Levy? I'm not sure. I'm leaving. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's get into some Tommy Wildfire Rich stuff. It's been let's, a while since we did some Tommy Wildfire. Somebody say something about sign programs. That's right. Action Wrestling. This one it's showing here November 6th. Uh, young Tommy Rich, the many faces of Tommy Rich. And there's uh, Robert Gibson, Austin Idol yeah. with the CWA belt. Uh, Ricky Morton and Ken Lucas, the Mid American Champions. Well, and and this uh, this looks to be from that uh, that Middle Tennessee area, uh, Memphis, and uh, uh, you see Rick Morton and Ken Lucas, and Robert Gibson was in a successful tag team with his brother right. Ricky Gibson. You might remember him from Crockett Promotions as Ricky Lee Jones. Uh, <laughs> uh, car accident ended his career uh, yeah. young. He he passed away of a car accident. Uh, in a car accident a few years ago, but, um, or, uh, you know, but uh, Ricky Gibson was a, was a great wrestler, um, but it's good to see Tommy Rich here. I mean, Tommy Rich, you talked about this in another episode, was over like oh, Rover. Yeah. Um, no after said, if, if we put Tommy Rich on the magazine, uh, it was going to sell. Absolutely. Speaking of, here's Sports Review Wrestling, where Bill After did put him on the cover, and he's got Harley Race in a sleeper. Uh, this is now double signed, but getting Tommy to sign it. But I had uh, had the opportunity and privilege to get Harley Race to sign this for me. And Harley, uh, the, the title of the magazine says, What made Tommy Rich say, Am I good enough to beat Harley Race again? And Harley Race actually wrote, No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, 
I was able to get Tommy Rich to sign it as well, and Tommy got a great kick out of seeing that. Yeah, and I think, too, I mean, outside of that, I don't know if Tommy ever beat Harley again, so. No. <laughs> no and when I was with Tommy back in 2017 for those many months, uh, you know, he always talked about it. Um, he would always say, put it on the kid. Yeah. Put it on the kid, because that's what Harley told the board. Yeah. Put it on the kid, yeah. you know, give him a shot. And uh, the rest is history. Tommy Wildfire Rich, the former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. And here is uh, a, the gold belt mag with the gold jacket. There. Yes, gold belt wrestling. This is one of uh, many magazines that was lesser known um, in the 80s. But some great photos uh, always in these magazines. And you see here, like I said, a, a great photo of Tommy Rich. Now, this next one is a program. And we're going to put these down. This is a program. It also happens to be from November 6th. <laughs> Action Ringside Wrestling Card, Lexington Wrestling at the Rupp Arena. There you go. Uh, and you can watch that, Championship Wrestling, this Saturday on WLEX. <laughs> Lexington TV, Channel 18 at noon until 1. There you go. Uh, but on this card, you had a great card uh, when you've got... Uh, uh, Jerry Lawler versus Jimmy Hart. Uh, but main event was Austin Idol versus Tommy Rich. And in July, I was able to to be with both guys and have them double sign. Yeah. And I thought that was fantastic. And then to make even better is there's a 10-man tag match. Mm -hmm. Bill Dundee, Jimmy Valiant, Tony Charles, Ken Lucas, Rick Morton. Jimmy Valiant yeah. signed this as well. There you go. And so triple signed. Um, and this is cool because this reminds me of, uh, you know, there's a lot of Memphis wrestling on, on the internet that you can yeah. find on YouTube. And depending on who taped it, you might have the Louisville feed and see the local promos for Louisville. You have, might have the Memphis feed. Yep. You might have the Lexington feed and you see the local, uh, which I missed the local promos. Right, right. Um, but really, really neat to see, uh, the different promos from the different areas. All right, and speaking of Austin Idol, I uh, was able to spend time with Austin at his home in Greenville, South Carolina. He and I became very good friends and have become friends, uh, but he just loves Miles. He talks about, you know, his baseball and this mm -hmm. and that. And so here's a two Scotty uh, stranglehold from his time up in Canada. Austin uh, wrestled all over um, and really, uh, you know, was a star everywhere he went. Um, I, I remember fondly... Uh, trading for uh, a tape of Georgia Championship Wrestling from 1980 when Austin collected the bounty mm -hmm. on Tommy Rich yep. and uh, put out by Harley Race $5,000. And they injured the knee of, of right. Tommy Rich. Right. And, and Idol would go there. I think he was the Georgia champion at the time. He'd yep. come out with the belt and say, Tommy Rich is the zero and Austin Idol is the hero. <laughs> Speaking of, there's a wrestling poster mag that Austin signed for me. A nice shot with the the hat. I was going to say, Austin always had the cool hats. Oh, yeah. I uh, was able to, and I've met and been with Lex Luger many times. Yeah. Uh, one of the special moments was uh, probably six six years ago, maybe longer. And I was able to tell Lex Luger for the first time that the match uh, where he defeated Hogan mm. uh, was one of my all-time favorite yeah. matches and uh, just a great one. But this is Lex Luger wins the WCW title. Yeah. And uh, Lex signed that one for me, which I thought was fantastic. And Lex, you know, um, if you have a chance to read his book, um, Wrestling with the Devil, he details a yeah. lot of uh, the different issues that he's had um, over the years, but it's also a wonderful story of redemption. It is faith-based, if that's something that you're into, uh, but it's a great story of redemption. Um, Lex has had some different health issues over the years, but he's doing great, looking good. Uh, he is happy, um, and we're happy to see Lex, uh, you know, back and, and doing good things. All right, so this next one is The Ringsider, which is a Georgia program, and they spotlight Jack Briscoe when Jack wins the world's heavyweight title, defeating Harley Race in Houston, Texas. A 16 super page special commemorative Briscoe edition. A dollar back in those days was a, was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Briscoe is congratulated by Atlanta promoter Paul Jones and co-promoter Les Welch. Salute to Jack Briscoe. So Jack Briscoe here with the 
original version of the dome globe, yeah. the uh, the red dome globe. And a few months back, uh, we had the uh, honor and privilege of hanging out with Jay Z Graham, who owns a replica of this belt. Um, I know it's one that Scotty uh, really appreciates That's that right. title, yeah. and uh, we were able to hold it in our hands. There's yeah. a great picture we posted yeah. a few months back, each one of us with the belt because we love the belts. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, this is this is a great one. The first night too that that belt was 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 held. Absolutely. That particular version of it, the crown jewel was retired that night. No doubt. And Jay Z, his belt's actually signed by Harley Race. By, signed by Harley Race, the yeah. first man to officially hold it. Yeah. Race lost it that night, but. He was the first yep. man yep. given that belt. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, so we have come to the end here, Mike, and we have a package break. Yes, we do. All right, so uh, these are always fun. It's been a great season, and we're going to see what's in this thing because you never know, and sometimes, and most of the time, I don't even know. Yeah. So well, that, we've, that we've been it... surprised this season with uh, some Terry Funk autographs we didn't know that were in there. Yeah. Um, some other autographs that we found that we the didn't know the Japanese right. one, where it uh, is signed by everybody and their mother. <laughs> um, but uh, that was really, really cool. And dated. I, I like and dated. dated. Yeah, 1959. 1959. Wow. So um, that was great. All right, so we're opening up the package. We'll move these down. Um, and now this is a familiar one, Mike. Yes. This is a very familiar one. And so let me get the package. This one's really taped up well. Um, Sent with care, you know. Wow, they really taped this thing up. I've never seen a I've never seen a magazine with an ankle sprain. Yeah. <laughs> but this one might be the first. Well, it uh, it looks like it might have healed up well during its uh, <laughs> during its physical rehabilitation. That's right. Okay. All right. So this is Best of the Wrestler Fall 1981. Um, I don't think I need to say much more. It's a classic as it gets. Ric Flair. Bloody with the belt says, nobody takes my title and lives. Let me see if I can hold mine in there. You like it? Uh... You want me to bust you open hard way there? Or... <laughs> um, but a classic cover. Uh, we've talked so much about uh, those uh, those bloody covers uh, that were very, very popular. Um, and what Scott, are the odds here, Mike? That we have a couple more. Um, <laughs> but again, these were some of the magazines that were inspiring um early on in life yeah. and uh and so uh, it's one of those things you have one you can't get enough and uh no i buy them every time i see them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been trying to find one i, I guess you have to call us yeah <laughs> um, all right mike the last thing is we've got some stuff to show the fans here and we if you missed any of our earlier episodes uh you've really missed out and so i want to for me we it's been a banner year for belts for us and We've had a great 2021 as we get close to uh, a new year and Christmas. And uh, I hope that you will be blessed as we have been blessed and our families have been blessed. Um, for me, the America's title was uh, a crowning moment of 2021 is uh, getting this belt and being able to, to really deep dive into L.A. Southern California wrestling has been just tremendous for me. And for me, this uh, Jim Crockett Promotions NWA World Television title, this was a classic belt design, uh, probably most synonymous with Arn Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the Crockett belts were among my favorite as a kid. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the season, that Clash of the Champions intro. If you haven't seen the first few Clash of the Champions, uh, the intro with all the Crockett belts getting struck by lightning um, and, uh, and, and highlighted and showcased. Um, and so this was a, a dream come true to be able to hold this belt in my hands. Yeah, unbelievable. And so, uh, fans, we have just had a great season. I mean, season six, you've supported us, you've commented, you've liked, you've retweeted, you've, you've done it all for us. Uh, and uh, we just cannot thank you enough. And we want to say uh, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. Don't forget that, that uh, we're going to have some specials. Yep. Christmas Coming Day up. special with Greg Valentine. We'll also do a New Year's Day special uh, with the three world champs. And so, Mike, any parting words? Hey, thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of this. We hope to continue to come into your lives and bring good Good things, because as crazy as the world can get sometimes, we want Wrestler Weekly to be the one space you can come to and uh, enjoy 
some good old professional wrestling. Absolutely. And Mike, you know, you're a Midnight Express fan. Right? I am a big Midnight right, so Express you, now, fan. Now, I am more of a Dennis Condry. I know you're a big Stan Lane guy. Sweet but, Stan. Yeah, and so... It's probably but, the hair. Might be. Uh, but do you remember whenever Dennis Condry would do his fingers like this on the belt? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that... You know, that, me, Reggie and I used to all, we, we would love it. I mean, didn't, he would just do this. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm the only one that ever saw it. But, there you go. But, uh, but well, there, we're going to have to do a deep dive on Dennis Condry's <laughs> habits. That's right. That's right. There was something about that. Um, but, uh, but no, we, we just cannot thank you enough. And you've made us, uh, you brought us back. Yeah. You know, like CM Punk. You yeah. Know, we thought that we would, we were done. Yeah. And, and now we're back. And now we're back. And Ice so, cream for everyone. That's right. Um, so, and don't forget... Uh, check out uh, Russell Weekly Conversations coming in early 2022. And then in the summer of 2022, uh, make the case. Make the case. We got it all coming down yeah, for you. And we might change it to making the case. We'll see. We'll see what the marketing team wants to do. We got to get Jason Hawkins in here and see what he wants to do. He is back from Big Al's. That's right. Way. That's right. Uh, fat back for everybody will be in your box. That's what we give. So <laughs> instead of ice cream bars, we do fat back and, and bacon. So, uh, but again, fans, we cannot thank you enough. Uh, again, continue to follow us at Wrestler Weekly, uh, all of our social media outlets, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com, Family Bacon Wrestling. Uh, you know where to find us. And for Reggie and Mike and myself, until next time, fans, so long for now. Wrestler Weekly. Five years. Five years. Happy anniversary. This is Bill Apter. And I thank you so much. I follow you guys, as you know. Uh, you bring back so much of what I did in my career, showing all the uh, classic magazine covers and stories. So happy anniversary from me, wonderful Willie, and all the after chatters out there. And I'll see you at Wrestler Weekly. Scotty, hi, it's George Napolitano. Congratulations on six years with Wrestling Weekly. I look forward to your posts every week. It's great information, and I will be looking forward to many, many more in the days and months and years to come. Congratulations. Have a great day. Wrestler Week, you got a minute. It's your live. Tommy Wildfire Ridge. The big debate. Old school, new school. Who cares? Wrestling Weekly, they bring you all the news. <laughs> Welcome to Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. I'm your host, Bob Cottle, alongside David Crockett.